You and I were both on that march yesterday, very happy to stand in solidarity uh, with fellow citizens uh, to call against the horrific rise of anti-Semitism we've seen in this country uh, as, uh, in the wake of the October 7th Hamas terrorist attack. Um, I don't know why there would be an attack, on, you know, attacks on Jews as a result of a terrorist attack on Jews, but that's the strange time we live in, Sam. Um, what do you make of Tommy Robinson in particular being at that march and all of the politicians who weren't there? I was spoken to Boris Johnson, uh, who was on the march with his wife. There were various other politicians, uh, mostly Jewish politicians, by the way. I didn't see anyone, you know, from the front bench of either party there. I didn't see, I didn't see, you know, you know Home Secretary, the Prime Minister, the leader of the Labour Party. Um, what do you make of, of them not being there, but the likes of Tommy Robinson being there and getting arrested? Yeah, well, I, I listened to the speech from Robert Jenrick, who was representing the government, Minister of State for Immigration. He spoke fantastically, brilliant speech, and I've heard him on this issue before, and it's no doubt what he cares about. But I did have to question, where was the Foreign Secretary? Where was the Home Secretary? And where was the Prime Minister? Frankly, he tweeted about it, but this was the biggest, single biggest gathering of against anti-Semitism in this country since 1937, when this country stood firmly against Sir Oswald Mosley leading the British Union of Fascists. And instead, who did we see turning up? Not a fascist, but is a person who I don't have much time or truck for at all, Tommy Robinson. Now, I think Tommy Robinson was probably just about treated unfairly by that protest, uh, by the police at that protest. Well, let's explain what happened to people at Casey. Tommy Robinson had informed the campaign against anti-Semitism. Also, they were made aware that he was going to attend this march. Uh, he has been speaking out uh, about, uh, you know, anti-Semitism. The concern has been that, well, A, it's always about Tommy Robinson when Tommy Robinson's there, and as we'll see, as what's happened, and B, the, the campaign for anti-Semitism, basically, they don't want somebody who's who also speaks out very negatively, very, I would say, racistly about Muslims. And, and I, I've got many issues with many religions and many of the, the teachings of Islam and is, Islamic radio, radical ideology and political Islam. Uh, but but I, it, it is my view from what I've seen and heard and read of what Tommy Robinson says that he, he, his views way cross that line. So the campaign for anti told the police they don't want him there. He left a cafe we've been having breakfast to join the march. He was immediately arrested, um, pepper sprayed uh, and the like, and, and mob, mob handled out of there by numerous numbers of police officers. Um, he hadn't, as far as I'm aware, broken any law. Now, given that we had all these people who were on pro-Palestinian marches uh, over every Saturday for the last few weeks, but also at sort of side marches, the Hizbut career, uh, they are, they're, a, they're a terrorist sort of supporting organisation. They are they are prescribed in pretty much every Arab country in the world and most of the European countries, but bizarrely not here. Um, and people with the most outrageous uh, flags and banners, chants and the like, they've not been arrested, but Tommy Robinson was. Is this just a classic example of the police just having one rule for one group of people and one rule for another. But remember, Julia, the police have no powers, Sir Mark Rowley says, no powers to step people. in until very specific circumstances have been met. Only when it's someone that everybody, everybody, including the Guardian editorial board, can get on board with hating, there they are with handcuffs, pepper spray, mob handing, more police officers than you would ever see in your lifetime unless they you just, posted but, something on Twitter. But they, but they, I mean, they just fit into his narrative. They and literally did what, what he would have wanted them to do. Exactly so. And but by the way, so did the politicians that didn't show up. Yeah. There is a reason why we need politicians to take moral, political leadership on topics like this. So they simply crowd out the likes of Tommy Robinson, who try and exploit the fact that, and this is what Tommy Robinson has always said, Politicians aren't talking about it. They're not dealing yep. with some of the issues and, that I'm prepared to and deal And this with. is the issue. And when politicians don't talk about it and they don't want to say it, and they, oh, well, oh, even-handed even both sides, they, they literally hand power to these people. Um, and we look, we see this, we see this in every country. We see this with Marine Le Pen in France. Uh, we've, again, we've seen it with uh, George Maloney in Italy. We've seen it with Hertfielders in the Netherlands only last week. Um, and again, there are very, they, people have a variety of views. I'm not into this whole, everyone's far right. Apparently I'm far right, you're far right. Anyone who says, I'm not entirely sure that we should just have an open door policy to anybody who wants to come here who doesn't share our values and won't assimilate. That apparently is a far right view. The fact that that is actually the view of the vast majority of people in this country 
uh, of many different political flavours um, is completely left. So if you call everybody who raises legitimate, reasonable concerns, so not remotely based on xenophobia or bigotry or race, um, that, and you call them far right, then you makes it very difficult to distinguish between the people who actually are and the people who are saying something reasonable. And that's where, and we're going to be talking about it in a few minutes' time, um, you know, Reform UK are doing very well because they are talking about it. It's why Hurt Wilders did very well, because they are talking about it. Do you think politicians think that we're just stupid and we won't notice, even when figures are published publicly, like the migrant figures we saw uh, last week, where more than 700,000 people more came to this country in 2022, and more than that again in the last year, um, than left. Do, do they think we don't notice all those people? The politicians absolutely believe that the public are stupid. That's why, they, they, that's why they say, oh, it's so dangerous for politicians to talk about migration. You're just stirring up tensions. As if there's this mass of people out there that if only they knew the truth, they would be angry. Well, boy, you're right, they will be angry. And we're seeing it with this anti-Semitism issue. Darren yeah. Jones, member of the Labour shadow cabinet, was asked on television yesterday, will you be going to the rallies? He says, no. Why not? Why aren't you going to the march against anti-Semitism? He said, well, I represent constituents that have got views on both sides of this. Yeah. Views of both sides of anti-Semitism being acceptable or not. 